Dell. This is the second of two Dell laptops that I received from Ross ACB. The first one was a Dell Latitude D630. Well, this is not a Dell Latitude D630. This is actually a Dell Latitude D520. The first very obvious difference comes when I put the D630 on top of the D520. As you can see, the D520 is a 4x3, or actually I think it's a 5x4, as opposed to the D630, which is a 16x9 or 16x10 affair. If we have a look at the fronts of the machines, we can see here on the D520, we get two speakers, whereas on the D630, it appears as though we only get one, which is kind of a disappointment, but such is the way that things go sometimes. And the latch is also different. This one pushes in, whereas on the D630, it slides sideways. Looking at the top, not really much in the way of discernible differences until I point them out. This one, stickers of course are optional. Apparently it was very expensive when it was purchased too, so I do feel kind of bad about having taken this for pretty much nothing, but well, he handed it to me, and if he wants something, I certainly got a couple of things that uh, I could be talked out of, but anyway, if we look there, we can see the status indication cluster, and it is smaller than the status indication cluster on the D630, because I believe there is no Bluetooth option on the D520, where there is on the 630. Could be other differences. I don't know off the top of my head, because I don't actually even know what indicators are on this versus that. On the left side, we can see that there is certainly a difference in the arrangement of the various ports, but not really much in terms of what ports you get. You still got the headphone and microphone jacks. Looks like there's an infrared port there that this one does not have. One PCMCIA card slot, which of course has the lever that will not go in for some reason. And of course it comes with a Dell blank, because why not? There's the FireWire port that this one also has, and the Kensington lock. Note that the wireless switch is not present on this one. And nor is the curious little opening in the bottom. On the back, again, we got a slight difference in the port arrangement, but it, I think it's pretty much completely identical between the two. We get power, VGA, serial, looks like an S video out that actually I just noticed this one does not have over here. Ethernet, modem, and two USB ports which are facing down as opposed to sideways on the D630. And of course the last side is completely identical with the two USB ports on both machines and of course Dell's. I believe they actually call this the D-Bay device drives there. This is the DVD plus minus RW drive module which is actually better, believe it or not, than what I got with the D630, which is just a DVD-ROM and a CDRW. I'm able to switch it between the two, because it is, for all intents and purposes, as far as I can tell, exactly the same. You've already seen what the D630 looks like. I'll compare and contrast that to the D520. Definitely a little bit of a different design, but same overall design cues. Being an older machine, it's got an older generation of CPU. It's actually got a Core 2 Duo T5500, as far as I can tell, installed in it. Which I think is, uh, is that a 2 GHz CPU? I can't actually remember. Well, whatever the case may be, it's got 4 gigs of RAM in it. Uh, it's got, what, a 100 gigabyte hard drive? I actually am not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that one here in a few minutes when we go ahead and power it on. And uh, it will be running Linux Mint, because I do have something in mind for this. It is actually going to be a low-end radio automation broadcast computer, by the time it is all said and done, to take the place of the netbook that I'm currently running, because I like to do a little bit of live DJing on that, and the netbook is not really conducive to doing that. The two things that are really of note here is the fact that this one does not actually have 
little eraser head mouse in the middle. It's just the trackpad. So if you don't like them, you're going to be using an external mouse. The other thing that's worth noting is this Centrino Duo sticker, which basically means this has the Intel graphics, the Intel wireless, and the Intel CPU. Whereas this is only guaranteed to have the Intel CPU. I believe this has Broadcom Ethernet. I actually don't even remember what video this has. Maybe Intel. It may actually be NVIDIA. I don't know. I didn't really look too much into it. I'll let you know in the video description. Alright, we are ready for power-up. I've got it plugged in. Can't run it off a battery. Why? Well, because the system does not have a battery. Some of you might know that these D520s were subject to a battery recall. And it came to me with a battery that was completely dead and wouldn't even respond to the system at all. And rather than take the chance that that was a recalled battery because all of the information about it seems to have disappeared, I just pulled the battery out and chucked it straight in the recycle bin. So, that's where we stand right now. So we'll go ahead and we'll power it up. And we'll go into system setup. D520, revision A08. Ross gets a kick out of it every time I say it, so I'm going to have to say that I will have to check for an updated BIOS for this machine. Eventually. I think it's wanting to test the memory here. I don't have time for that. I think escape was the thing to bypass it. Yeah. So we can have a quick little look-see in here. D520. You can see Core 2 Duo. 1 gigahertz. Seems kind of slow to me. All that. DDR2. 4 gigs. 100 gigabyte hard drive. And of course, the Intel video. Unfortunately, it's only limited. It's limited to 1024 by 768 on the video, which kind of sucks. But such is the way that things go. No batteries. Date and time is not quite accurate. But that's because I was running Linux on it. This will be running Linux Mint by the time it's all said and done. Everything there is pretty much straightforward. So, yeah, let's go ahead and begin installing Linux Mint. Ah, definitely not the fastest thing in the world to start, but uh, certainly not the slowest either. It's not too bad, really, all things considered. It's coming off of a uh, DVD, so we will begin the installation process. But first, I'm going to try and connect it to my wireless network. Look at that, it even supports the 5 GHz band. That's awesome. Go ahead and run the installer. Now the fact that that's a uh, a blinking indication might be a little annoying, but uh, oh well, it, in it indicates activity. It might actually be both, because I notice that there are times when it stops flashing and it just goes solid. So there's that. I know Linux likes to do that on some wireless cards, where sometimes it's solid and sometimes it's not. Well, unfortunately, that ran out of tape, so I'm now stuck with this. But uh, you can see that we're in here at the process now of at least beginning the installation. You've seen an install of Linux Mint probably hundreds of times over, so I'm not going to show the whole process, but uh, I'm hopeful that everything is going to work, including... Uh, it's not asking me about installing updates while installing, so... Mmm, I don't know about that one. And here we are, off to the races. I'm guessing that this process is probably going to take about, oh, 10 to 15 minutes. Shouldn't be too long. And then we will be all ready to go to get this thing set up for its future task. And just like that, installation has finished, so we'll go ahead and reboot now. Go into the new install and hope that everything is set up correctly. Install updates and all that mess. And then I'm going to actually be installing the Mix DJ program as well as VNC because, like I said, this is going to be taking the place of the netbook. So I gotta configure it for that. It's already midnight, so I really should be in bed right now, but um, 
I'm here working on this instead. Go ahead and watch it boot. probably won't bother showing the whole process of installing mix and all of that mess because it's not really interesting again. Trying to keep these videos at least somewhat short and sweet and to the point. Here it is. You can see the machine now running and doing what it should be doing. Definitely a much faster. Well, that was an interesting reaction. I hope that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> oh, wow, the keyboard might have an issue. We might have a problem with the keyboard. Because I saw it putting, uh, putting characters in. It's not supposed to do that. I would certainly explain some of the weird behavior I've seen from this machine. Wouldn't be surprised if there is something wrong with the keyboard. Yeah, unfortunately, I think the keyboard is not working. See? That is not supposed to be doing that. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Looks like this thing probably is going to need a new keyboard before I put it into service. Oh, well. I tried. That's pretty much it. I can't really think of much else to share with you, so... Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then. Well, it seems kind of interesting that it's not working now when it was working. When I had the live disc on, maybe I'll do a little bit further troubleshooting and see if I can figure it out. But I'm going to do that off camera. i got other things to do.